Hello there and welcome to this very interesting special episode of the Harvest Ways service today. It is a pre-recorded sermon. It's live. It's same me. My name is Dr. Sammy Jezero, the way from the Harvest Ways International Church right here in the down south of Northfield in Birmingham in England. I really want to thank every one of you for joining us every time. All throughout this time of Corona, God has been merciful to us. God has blessed us so much, so much so tremendously that it's during this time of Corona crisis that God took us higher to another level, a higher notch in being able to use this new telecommunication method of the internet to reach out the whole world. And I don't think that it's going to go back. I don't think even when Corona has gone and we go back over to our different, you know, services and halls of uh, worship of the Lord, I am very sure that the Spirit of the Lord at this point in time is already ministering to all the pastors across the world that we must stay put with this sermon on the air internet communication, the ability to bring the Word of God live and direct to God's people across the world. Or I want to thank as many of you that are tuning in today. It's pre-recorded because today is Saturday night, Saturday night right here at about 5.30 p.m. in the UK. I'm recording this because I will not be here on Sunday. So when you're going to be watching this, you're going to be watching this live as if I'm speaking to you live because already it's live. But the real truth of the matter is that God is promoting this, the, 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 uh, the second twin. Actually, he's the first twin. David, my son, I'm, I'm privileged of the Lord and, 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 and gratuitously being, being offered the grace of God to be able to take him over to his university town in York, way up north uh, of England, by the grace of God, on today, on Sunday morning. So I will not be here today. And even though I do have a few other lieutenants in, 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 in the making that could bring you the word of the Lord at any time, and I felt that, you know what, uh, you know, this Christian charity series that we've been talking about for a while now, uh, Zerubbabel, your hand has been put to the plow. You started this. Zerubbabel, your hand will finish this. You know why? Because as a good father in the spirit realm, I like to make sure that they are tested and proven and tested, proven they know to use their own skills, not wanting to be like me, uh, trying to be like me, is a failure. You're going to have to allow them to be able to use their own skills, to be able to you know, gather their own experiences, gather their own notes, and then, tried and tested, we can release them forth by the power of God with hands being laid upon them to bring you the word of the Lord. However, I have started this by the power of God, and I will finish this series this month end by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, I'm so glad that you came in to be with us here today. I have friends all the way from Villa de Mar in Chile, from Ontario in Canada, from Brazil, from Birmingham here, London, uh, uh, Moscow, the other time we heard from Moscow, Australia, Australia at 12 o'clock right here. It's going to be 10 o'clock in some part of Australia where, where we have some people that are watching us at this time. And I just want to thank God in Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana. We thank God for you all. I can't take the time to uh, begin to appreciate you now, but the Holy Spirit is here to welcome you and to bless you. I'm not going to be here for one hour today. I'm going to do 30 minutes by the grace of God. So the earlier that I got started with this, the better it is going to be for us in Jesus' name. Today, I am going to uh, speak to you on the topic, like you've seen it on the caption, freely given, freely receive. Freely given, 
and freely receive. And but before I do that, let's just go before our Father God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I do ask you today to take all the glory, again, all the honor and all the authority and the power, dominion and goodness for yourself alone, O God, and the joy to give to us, the healings to give to us, the blessings to give to us, O God. Thank you for all the healings you've done. Thank you for what you are doing in our lives. We give you praise. We honor you. We magnify you. And Lord, I do pray for those who are going through some tough times at this time, through uh, divorce, separation, even exacerbated by the corona crisis. Lord, I ask you, O God, to apply the bombing Gilead in their lives. Make a way why there seems to be no way. And glorify your name, I pray with thanksgiving, taking authority over every uh, uh, contrary power that may like to uh, peck on the word or pick on the word or swallow the word of God away from the heart of the people as the sower goes to plant and sow the word today. I send you all into bondage by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the word of God come out with clarity tonight, O God. Speak through me like an oracle of God that I am. The express cancel of your divine will, I pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I felt the Holy Spirit would like me to read to you uh, the text message which I shared on the Facebook on Friday, Friday afternoon at 2.26 right from one of our sisters in the church talking about her own sister. Here is the text. Afternoon, Pastor Sammy, I just want to give you an update. That gives you a notion that we are following. We are following in prayer. We are following in telephone calls, even though we've not been able to go see them or greet them or say hello to them. But we're following. We're following spiritually. The hospital called today to provide Victoria with her results. Listen to this. Her doctor called even earlier, two hours earlier today than scheduled. He told her that everything, <laughs> glory to God, everything came out negative. She put that negative in big capital bold letters. She's been discharged and has follow up in six months time. God is forever amazing and faithful. Hope you're blessed. It's Jane. Glory to God. This text came from one of the sisters in our church. Been through a lot in their lives. It's their personal testimony. She was diagnosed with uh, a, 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 a big cancer, trouble on the back five years ago. Operation was done successfully but she had to keep on checking up and checking up and checking up with the hospital from time to time anytime they'll call her and the word of the lord came to her and says the lord has healed you finally and totally nothing no more to worry about in jesus name however i did encourage her to keep on going back and going back anytime she's called and uh, call back in, come in, you know, we have to do this, we have to do that. She'll call me and I'll say, remember the word of the Lord that I've been spoken to you uh, four or five years ago. It is done. It's a done deal. Go. God is ahead of you. We are praying for you. We are giving thanks to God for your behalf. Lo and behold, only yesterday on Friday, Friday, the word came that she has being discharged by the same anointing and authority and the power of God upon my life today, freely given, freely given, freely received, freely give. I freely give also to you today, all of you, any one of you listening here this afternoon to this sound of my voice. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, diseases disappear. 
I decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, cancer, die. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, anointing for provision, increasing your lives. In Jesus' name. I'm reading to you from Matthew chapter 10, and you will know later on why all this is happening right here. Because, because God will want us to go in his program. God will want us to go in with his presence. And God has assured us of his provision. As he calls us to send us out, freely given, and freely gave. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner, all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, of Zebedee, John, his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Thomas, Matthew, the publican, James, Libius, whose name was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and notice Judas, Iscariot, and the Bible says, who also, the Bible qualified him, who also betrayed him. There be, there be, there be some disciples of the Lord. walking with Christ. They say they are born again. They say they have the power of Christ in their lives. God freely has bequeathed his power into their lives. However, listen to me, they are not mounting guard, they are not mounting guard on the door of the anointing over their own lives. Say it again, Pastor. Many there are today, like Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. You know why he betrayed Christ? Because he betrayed himself. He was not mounting guard. He was not mounting guard on the anointing over his own life. Paul wrote to Timothy. He says, be careful of this anointing in your life. Be careful of the word that you preach. Be careful of the words that you teach. Take heed to your doctrine are you listening to me? Uh, Judas Iscariot did not take heed to the doctrine of Christ. He did not take heed to the doctrine that he had been freely given. He was meant to freely give. Because Jesus says, as many as to whom much is given, much will be required. Much will be expected. Judas betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, not because the anointing was not on his life. Judas betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, not because Christ did not love him. Jesus, Judas betrayed Christ Jesus, not because God did not bequeath power to him. Judas betrayed the Lord because he did not mount guard on the anointing upon his life. Friends, I don't care how much anointed you are. If your lifestyle does not match up with the anointing in your life, I'm afraid you may end up like Judas Iscariot. Look at verse 5. This twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and not into any city of Samaritans enter ye not, but rather go to the household, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why, pastor? Because God already ordained it to be so, that salvation first will belong to the Jews and then the Gentiles. God is a God of order. God, our God, is a God of order. Is there somebody listening to this today and questioning the order of God and the church? The order of God in the church is God first, Christ next, and the body. Are you questioning the order of God over your family? The order of God over the family is Christ first, the husband, the wife, then the children. 
Are you questioning the order of God over your workplace establishment? My friend, question no more today by the power of God. Why? Because I dare say to you today that our God is a God of order. Salvation belongs to the Jews. And Paul the Apostles wrote to the Romans, it says, at the nick of time, God knows what to do. He is at this time allowing Israel to back away from Christ so that the door could be opened for the Gentiles to come in. The Gentiles are the wild olives. We are the wild olives being grafted in. We are the wild olives being grafted in into the true olive branch. And the Bible says at the nick of time, at the nick of time, God already has time in his hands, sets everything up in its own time. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in his time. Is there somebody here today questioning the order of God? Question no more. Is there somebody today questioning the timing of God? Question no more, my friend. The Bible says he hastened to do all things in his time. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in his time. Isaiah cried out, it says, A little one will become a thousand, a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, I, the Lord, will hasten to do it in his time. God has a way of hastening things. God has a way of fastening things up. God has a way of fast forwarding things in his will. Question no more. The timing of God, nor the order of God. The Bible says in verse 7, Matthew 10, And as you go, go, preach, saying. That's the program of God. God already exerted his program. Not only has God God's time in his hands and fixed everything up, everything is ready or it's ever say it again, Pastor. Everything is already ordained. I'm sorry. Everything is already ordained by God. God says, as you go, go with my program. Matthew 28. Go with my program. Go with my program. This is what you say. Preaching the kingdom of of heaven is at hand. And as you go preaching, guess what happens? Power accompanies the word. Say it again, Pastor. As you go preaching, are you a man of God here today? Are you a child of God, born again, born again? You already have the same power of God. You have the same anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the anointed one dwells on the inside of you. You have no man needing no man to teach you no more, no nothing. You have the anointing of God on the inside of you. The Bible says, go in the power of God. As you go in the power of God, what happens is you, decide, you discover that power manifests or births miracles. Say it again, Pastor. Power manifests or births Miracles, miracles will begin to occur. Have you not read about the account of the apostles that they came back talking to Jesus Christ and they were rejoicing? They were rejoicing that the demons were shrieking and getting out and things were happening. They were dancing. They were rejoicing. And Jesus says, don't just dance because, because you see power. Don't just dance because you see the manifestations of miracles. Miracles are everyday occurrences in the spiritual realm for those that believe. It's normal. Just like you breathe air, that's how you should breathe miracles. Glory to God. Don't be surprised, therefore, when you live in righteous. Don't be surprised, therefore, when you take up the cross and follow Christ. Don't be surprised, therefore, when you decide to be a true soldier of Christ. That miracles will begin to attest to you all kinds of diseases. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received. Look at what Jesus says. 
freely do you give? You know why Jesus was saying that to them? Freely you have received. Freely do you give? It was because of Judas Iscariot, the one that will betray him. The reason why the word of God is coming out to you, I've got just eight more minutes. I told you it's going to be a specialized edition today. It's just half an hour. I am not in a rush. What you get in one hour is what you get in 30 minutes. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't God so gracious to us? The reason why God in Christ Jesus, Jesus the Lord was warning them was for no other reason than the crazy, quick-fingered, lily-livered, twinkle-eyed, after covetousness, Judas Iscariot. Jesus says, freely I give it to you. Freely you receive. Are you a bastardized minister of God? listening to my voice today don't be like Judas Iscariot don't sell out on Christ don't sell the anointing don't betray the power that that was bequeathed upon your life Jesus says Jesus the Lord the master says freely I give to you freely you receive you know why He's even telling them not to take anything for themselves. Are you crazy, pastor? No, Jesus was not crazy. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. Why? You know why? Because the workman is worthy of his labor. Say it again, pastor. <laughs> Glory to God. The work, a true, a true laborer, a true laborer, it's worthy of his meat. Jesus says, wherever the meat is, thither the eagles will descend. Friends, all you have to do is just sow the word. All you have to do is just speak the word. All you just have to do is just go in the power of the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is just go with the program of God. All you have to just do is just go knowing that the presence of God is with you. All you have to do is to obey God and provision will follow you. Judas Iscariot flaunted the laws of Christ. He ended up in hell flaunted the words of the master. He ended up committing suicide. Flaunted the words of freely I give to you. Freely you give. Stop selling the gospel. Stop selling the anointing oil. Stop, stop, stop merchandising the anointing of God. God's word says freely I give to you. In Christian charity, in this Christian charity, Freely you give to others. The workman is worthy of his meat. If you do well, if you do well, if you do well, wouldn't you be happy? Wasn't that the same voice of God over to the murderous Cain? But if you're crouching about the place and looking held us together and, and beginning to get, you know, quick fingered, don't you think that sin lies at your door? Don't you think so? Don't you think so? Now, come on now. Come on, pastor. Take it home with them. A man of God, a true man of God will never hunger. A true man of God will never lack. God has already said it in his word. I will meet your needs more than you can ask or think by the power. The power. We're talking about the power of God. It's the power of God that makes your provisions be met. That's why Jesus is talking to them. He's talking about their provisions. He's saying, don't take anything for yourself. If you go in my power, if you go in my presence, Provision is assured of God. 
How do you know that, Pastor? Show me a verse in the scripture. How you know that, Pastor? Let me show you from the life of Elijah the Tishbite. In 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. The brook dried up. The brook, the brook, uh, uh, is it, uh, uh, pardon me. Uh, the brook cherith. I almost forgot that. The brook dried up. It was in time of fam famine. The brook dried up. And look at what God said. God says, Now when the brook has dried up, in verse 8, verse 7, And it came to pass. <laughs> Maybe your brook is about to dry up and you're scared. You are, you are scared to, to your bones. Go four more minutes. It came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Like manna ceased. Manna is going to cease because there is a change of gear. That's why, that's why God says, go in my power. Go with my word. Go with my program. If you go in my power, if you go with my presence, if you go in my, in my authority, provision will follow you. Even though there be changes in the gear system, even though the seasons of life may change, man of God, woman of God, God's word says that you will not lack. After a while, brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Look at verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to the Gentiles. Do you see that? The Gentiles, Zidonians, the Gentiles, they weren't believers. They weren't, that woman, that widow of Zarephath was not a believer. And she was here, listen to me, God was already speaking to her. Let's read it from God's word. Go to Zidon, which belongs to the Zidonians, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman. I'm reading from God's word. I am reading from 1 Kings in chapter 17. And verse 9, excuse me, I have commended a widow woman, a widow woman there to sustain you. Friends, if you go in the power of God, with the program of God, the program of God is the gospel, the unashamedly, unashamed gospel of Christ Jesus, the unbiased gospel of Christ Jesus. The on the undiluted, that's what I'm looking for. The undiluted gospel of Christ Jesus. If you go in the power of God, with the program of God, with the person or the personality of Christ, provisions will never lack. Say amen. Provisions will never lack. You know why? Because there is a God of Christian charity. Who sends his charitable workers all across the world and will more than sufficiently provide for them? Don't be like Judas Iscariot. That was gonna hide a few <laughs> burgers in the back, gonna flounder the laws of Christ. Always looking, always looking for where he's going to gain. Eventually, he lost his dear life. Are you blessed by this word today? Are you blessed? See, he's, he's already telling me, time is up. Are you blessed by this word today? If you have not come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, uh, take this time right now. Say with me, Lord Jesus, Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Wash me clean. Make me a child of God. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I'd like to hear from you. It's freely given. You freely receive. I give it freely. In Jesus' name. Write me today to admin at harvestways.org. Even as we say freely given, freely received, the gospel is costly. Somebody pays for it. Somebody pays for it. Or God told somebody 
God told the widow woman of Zarephath to sustain him. Are you going to obey the voice of God over your life today? If you want to partner with Sammy Joseph Ministries, if God's Holy Spirit, we have to give that opportunity to you to be a partner with us. It's by faith. We work by faith. I'm putting the word out to you by faith. If you know that the Holy Spirit has spoken to you today to partner with this word that is coming out to you, freely received, freely given, that's the motto, that's what we believe. 32 years in ministry, never a beggar, never had to bastardize the word of God, never had to, to behave like Judas is carry out. However, God has used and keeps using different men and women to partner with us. All you have to do today is hear the voice of God, hear the voice of God, and hearken and obey the voice of God. And go over to harvestways, www.harvestways.org today and sow generous, generously as the Lord bless you. I will see you on Wednesday night during our interactive Bible study and we'll dig deeper on freely receive, freely give. Until I come your way next time, the Lord bless you and keep you in all of your ways in Jesus' name. Shalom and bye-bye. I love you. Bye.